Welcome, everybody. This is Richard Tunes, author of How to Get Your Life Back from Margellan's Chronic Lyme and Other Skin Parasites. This is uh, Sunday. What's the date, Robin? August. It is the, August 7th. August 7th, 2022. And we are going into the stress management segment. Uh, stress is something that is rarely dealt with when we're dealing with Morgellons. Um, just a, a week or so ago, I, I noticed where uh, there are uh, a, a cancer group actually setting up a, uh, a buddy system for uh, cancer patients, having people that they can talk to, uh, dealing with the same things. And we also have a buddy system that uh, we have, uh, and we have a person in charge of that. Her name is Lee. I don't know if she's with us today, but uh, if so, she, we'll be asking her to talk a little bit about it a little bit later on because who in the hell do you have that you can talk to about Morgellons uh, or the itchy, bitey, creepy things that happen to you? Who do you have? Who, who do you trust? You, you you would hope to go, you go to your doctor, <laughs> he sends you to the psychiatrist, okay? <laughs> yeah, hey, go talk to the psychiatrist. You're delusional. You don't even have those things. Yeah, so that's about the best that you can get. <laughs> and the, the psychiatrist, he, he's only going to want to uh, uh, prescribe some kind of medication. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the, the, the irony is, that he might actually prescribe one of the medications in Chapter 6 that help reduce dopamine uptake in the brain, and that actually does contribute to reduction of parasitic symptoms such as uh, ORAF or Seroquel or, or uh, Abilify or something like that. You know, it's, it's kind of uh, kind of really laughable when you think about it, is that uh, they, they actually know how to help, but not because they know what it's doing. They just think that it's a psychological issue when it really isn't. But So, uh, Mary, you had, uh, I sent you a couple emails. Let's read one of those emails. And because people, I, in, they don't often express during this segment how they feel, but they write to me how they feel. And just listen to th these heartbreak uh Emails. Okay. Okay. The yeah. first one says, honestly, every day I fight this battle. I can't take much more. I feel like I'm dying. Moments that I literally want to be dead. I can't afford this or that. Or do I even have an effing clue what any of it is? It drives me nuts. I can barely cook and you want me to change my diet. So hard. My mouth hurts all of the time. I thought my teeth were falling out because of the drug, but since I stopped doing those seven years ago, that's not what is happening. I brush weird stuff out of my hair every day. Who wants to live like this? Nobody. I pray every day that there is a cure. I'm so tired of people just thinking I'm effed up crazy. Well, I, I get emails like that all the time, and my heart goes out to anybody in this in the position uh, the diet yes it's important I don't know how this lady is going to get and make the diet work but it's number one uh, we have um, a calls. yes Robin I just want to say you know um, you don't have to cook a lot to make the diet work you, you just need to read the diet and uh and it's easy it really is easy so um hopefully you know i mean when you're filled with despair it's like everything is the straw that breaks the camel's back but she didn't even look at the diet you can tell because i mean how hard is it to cook a hamburger or you know make a tiny salad it's not hard it's not cooking per se and um and and you know you just have to have a paradigm shift in your thinking that this is what you have to do to get through this if you want to get better you need to do a b and c 
and and that's why we're here to help people with that paradigm shift. Exactly. I wrote back and I suggested that she do it in chunks instead of looking at all of the stuff that I have to do, all of this overwhelming stuff I have to do. Right. Chunk, chunk it. Do what Robin said. Start with a diet. Start with one chunk. One chunk. Okay. Then another chunk. Clean your skin. Clean your skin. Bathe. Use Epsom salts. Up to five cups. With I mean, you don't have to use Nature's Gift if it's unaffordable. We do have a, 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 a discount program for people who are uh, basically indigent and uh, limited income on Social Security and have no friends that can help them out and, and no support. We do have a program that we can make it available very reasonably, but chunk it. Clean your skin and then chunk it. Clean your environment. Ammonia, two fifty, three dollars a gallon. Spray it. Lasts a long time. Maybe a, a gallon a week. Is you know, spray it everywhere. Chunk it. Chunk it. Don't make it such a big deal. Read the book, one or two pages at a time. Put post-its in it. Dog ear the pages. Whatever. Chunk it, chunk it. So take that big problem and make it manageable. One chunk at a time. Okay, uh, next email. <clears throat> okay, this one says is from Marla, and she says, Hi, I'm just about had it with this disease. I've had it probably for seven or eight years now, and I just haven't been pretty good for a long time. But this last one, this white stuff is under my skin and all over my body. My fingers might, and my fingers, and it's like it's filling me up, and it comes out on its own now. But I'm good, but the cat's got it now, too, and that breaks my heart. I don't know how to stop this white stuff from coming out, coming out of my head is seems down through my nose and all spread all over my face when my on my fingers and everywhere but now I have a stoma in my abdomen and hernias a bad back and I'm in a wheelchair and it's hard for me to even get around the things that are in my mouth they are like clear worms that can stretch clear to the floor they choke me at night they choke me in the daytime now even then I don't know I just had never been able to get rid of them. They come out of my nose and throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know why I'm even talking to you about this because I feel like there's nowhere to go. I just got over anal cancer. I think I'm in remission. Now they want to take the hernias out and put them back in. And I'm afraid that there's, that's going to interfere with the robot doing surgery. I'm so full of electricity that it's ridiculous. I really don't think that there's anything you can do for me at this point, but I just got in the mood to talk about it. You have a good day. I'm going to go now. Thank you. I also haven't heard anyone talking about those games, spinning around in the toilet and blinking lights on them, and I've taken pictures of them doing so anyway. Bye for now, Marla. Uh, another... Uh you know, unfortunately, this lady is also in a wheelchair, which adds a problem to it. And I can appreciate the, the handicap aspect. Uh, and, again, it's important to rise above our handicaps because if it weren't for another person who is actually totally blind, not necessarily, not because of more gallons, but this lady was is blind, has overcome the handicap, and has gotten her life back. So, yeah, having a handicap raises the level, but again, it's chunking it. It's chunking it. And I want to give credit to Tony Robbins, is the person I, I learned of this idea, chunking. 
uh, you know, not that we're going to go walking on uh, uh, burning coals, you know, things like they, he does, uh, but just chunking things one one thing at a time. Just take this and get this done. Get the diet going. Um, she talks about intestinal parasites in the first segment. No, the second segment. Uh, question and answer, we talked about intestinal parasites. So complete the questionnaire. I send out a, an evaluation, uh, uh, giving you an education as to what organisms you may be dealing with. I send out protocol. You can chunk that protocol. You don't have to do it all at once. You can just start with start, make the diet work. And then in a case like this, the intestinal parasites seem to be a big cofactor. Go for that. Go for the intestinal parasites and chunk that. Get rid of it. Uh, the cats, that's going to be, I'm, I'm hoping she has help, uh, people that come in and, and uh, can help her as well, I, you know, but uh, the cats is another issue. Worst case scenario is we have to let the cats go. And I know that pets can be like your your children, but sometimes you're in a situation where it's either it's you, and the only way you're going to have a chance is by yourself, and you have to let your kids go. But it's a hard, tough decision, and sometimes getting your life back from more gallons is about making those tough decisions. Um, well, I had a question because what I what I wanted to ask Robin was how many um, of the 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 might. Medication, the thing I said, I can't remember. Night and pyram? Yes. How, how, how many, do you take How do I take it? So I, I called them up to talk to them because um, I was taking, well, I take it with Lufeneron and I take it with, te Lufeneron you have to take 10 grams of fat with a meal. So right. I was taking them both together with a meal with 10 grams of fat, which could be a tablespoon of butter, an egg cooked in butter, four ounces of protein. It's not that hard to get. But um, I was taking the night and pyram like once every three days and it really wasn't doing anything. And I called them up. I started taking it every day and I called them up just to make sure. And she said, well, we don't usually recommend that, but if that's what works for you, continue. It's fine. So... So that's what I've been doing. I mean, they're available for your questions. Um, okay. I recommend I'll, taking it once or twice a week. If you don't see any results from that, then take it more frequently. But I would combine it with the Lufeneron, and I would make sure you take it with a meal with 10 grams of fat. Okay. Great. Right, thank you. Perfect. Uh, perfect answer, Robin. Perfect. Um, yeah. I'm in communication with them, and they're thinking of, uh, making one capsule with both Lofineron and Nitin Pyram combined in one capsule. So that's that's something that's on the uh, on the on the uh, plan. Uh, but you wouldn't take it forever. Like with Lofineron, you could do 96 days and then another round of 96 days. With this, you wouldn't do it more than uh, one round of the combined, and then you would just uh, go to the Lofineron by itself. All right, uh, that's all of the uh, people that have written in, and uh, Robin is going to uh, use a technique in managing stress because, as she mentioned earlier, is like stress is like the straw that breaks the camel's back sometimes, and you, you're dealing with so much and so much and so much, and then suddenly uh, it's just too much, and it all falls apart, and We've all been there at one point. The point is we want to minimize the times, the number of times we get there so that, uh, and there are different things that we can do to do that. And deep breathing is one of them. And it's important to remember to incorporate uh, deep breathing in your life on a daily basis. So, Robin, take it away. Let's uh, teach us how to do deep breathing. And everybody at home, uh, you're going to uh, – Follow her instructions and do it with her, and then get a little bunch of post-its. Uh, it only have to be two by two, and write on deep breath, and and stick one under your automobile mirror, 
your rear view mirror, uh, stick one on the refrigerator, stick one on the back of your tele your cell phone, stick one on your your controller, uh, your your uh, TV controller. And every time you see that, do a couple of deep breaths. You'll be amazed. It also helps balance blood pressure issues. Okay, take it away, Robin. Deep breathing. Okay. All right. So, you know, the thing, deep breathing doesn't help with certain kinds of anxiety. What helps with certain kinds of anxiety is changing your focus onto something else. But deep breathing does help us become more peaceful, just in general. So when you deep breathe, you want to breathe from your diaphragm, which is in your belly, and we're going to breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth. We're going to breathe in for five, five or ten seconds, hold for five seconds, and then breathe slowly out through our mouth for ten seconds. So five, five, and ten. And your shoulders do not go up and down when you breathe. Your stomach goes in and out like a bellows as you use your diaphragm. And uh, and I like to combine it with affirmations and prayer and uh, visualization. So, all right, we're going to take a cleansing breath and release. And then breathe in through your nose. Two, three, four, five. And hold. Two, three, four, five. And slowly exhale. And picture walking barefoot in your house without getting bit. And being able to sit on your couch, breathe in, two, three, four, five. And hold, two, three, four, five. And smile as you exhale because it changes everything when you smile. And breathe in, two, three, four, five five and hold two three four five and exhale and picture joy driving out your pestilence seven eight nine ten and breathe in two three four five and hold and picture every cell in your body turning like flowers and exhale to light and health and wellness. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And one more. Breathe in. Hold. And exhale. And then have some water, cystus tea, something to Get rid of impurities and toxins in your body that you are releasing as you deep breathe. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Especially in this weather. Oh, absolutely. Sore. 